ZImage Turbo offers more features by pairing it with ControlNet Union to unlock new styles and compositions from a single prompt. After breaking down multiple workflows, I realized a dual sampling setup using the advanced K sampler that gives a massive boost in detail and variation. So we'll build this step by step, including how to use the depth anything V3 node to guide the model into anything you want. To get started, visit the page here to download the Z Image Table Control Net Union model. Find the file down here that save tensor, which is 3GB in size. Click here to download, then save the file into your directory. Go to Models, find Models Patches folder. I have my file saved here as you guys can see. After that, I'm using the portable version of Comfy, so find the update folder then make sure to update Comfy UI to the latest version. Inside Comfy UI, these are the custom nodes I'll be using for this workflow. Comfy UI ControlNet Aux, Depth Anything V3, RG3 Custom Node, Comfy UI Easy Use, KJ Nodes, then Use Everywhere Custom Node. Once you have all of this installed, let's go back then restart Comfy UI. Now, let's build a workflow together, starting with the ControlNet workflow. Right click to add a node, go to image, find load image, then I'll make this bigger. I have this image I found on Pinterest, so I'll drop this into the node here. Next, double click on the canvas, then type image scale to total pixel. Select the native node here, this node will resize the image while maintaining the original aspect ratio. So from here, we'll extract the control net data from the original image. To do this, right click to add a node, we go down to find the new depth anything V3 custom node. This update provides a variety of nodes. So from the list here, we'll select depth anything V3. So make sure you have installed this custom node earlier. I'll focus only on the control conditions depth in this video. So this new node needs an extra model to generate the depth image. From the list here, select download and load anything V3. Click on model, select DA3 base. And from experimenting, this base model is decent enough to give us good results. I'll go ahead to pan to the right from here, drag out the depth output slot. This will help us to see a preview of the control net results, which is depth in my case. So let's make this bigger. I'll zoom out from here, highlight all the nodes, then I'll place them into a group. I'll rename this control net group. So let's test these connections if all is working correctly. I'll go up here, then we hit run. All right, I like this and the result is good. We can notice how detailed the depth V3 extracts the data. So let's build a simple text to image workflow. I made this in my earlier video, but I'll go over it again in an introductory manner. So first right click to add a node, we go to advanced, loaders, select load diffusion model. In this node, load your native Z image table model. I'm using the BF16 version, but if your video card is not powerful, you can use the FP8 version. Drag out the model output, go to search, then type model sampling. Select the node here, model sampling aura flow. This node applies control over the sampling process. So let's adjust the shift here to three or higher, similar to using model sampling SD3. After this, we need the load clip node. This will help the model to read and understand your prompts to know what exactly you want to generate. In this node, select the model 3 underscore 4 b Change the type to Lumina 2. This is the correct format Z image needs to understand your prompting. Now, drag out the clip. We go down to clip text and code. Make a copy of this node below. This will be the positive conditioning. Below will be the negative conditioning. Then remember to link the load clip into the negative node. After this, pan below the nodes. Right click to add a node 
simply go to loaders select load vae in this node you should already have this model ae.safe tensor if you are familiar with flux one then i'll drag out the output select search connect this into the custom node anything everywhere this will automate the connection into any VAE we use later in the workflow. I'll zoom out from here, select all of these nodes, then place them into our second group. I'll rename this section as Load Models Group. Moving on, panning to the right, I'll be using the dual sampling structure similar to 1.2.2. So right click to add a node, we go to sampling, select K Sampler Advanced. I'll hold Alt, then make a copy of the same node to the right. The first sampler will be used to generate the composition, then the second case sampler will be used to refine the composition. Now let's make the connections. I'll move this down to see the parts easily. Drag the model controlling the sampling. I'll use reroute into both of the model slots input. Next, link the positive conditioning. I'll use reroute, join this into both samplers. After that, the negative conditioning, we also reroute from here. Then we send this into both samplers the same way. Now, drag out the latent, go to search, type SD3 latent. Choose the node here, then let's drag this down. Now, link the latent from sampler one into sampler two. Let's pan to the right once again, drag out the latent down here, select VAE decode. So this will reconstruct the image from its invisible representation. The VAE slot will auto join. Now drag out the VAE decode, then use save node to see the final output. Let's zoom out from here, highlight all these nodes. Once again, let's place them into a group. Then what do we call this? Sampling group. Now that everything is ready, let's test the text to image process to see the final result. I'll zoom onto the positive node. I'll paste my prompt I want to see here. Then panning down, we can collapse the negative node since we do not need a negative prompt. Next, I realized your latent size influences the sharpness and look of your image. So I'll use a one by one aspect ratio, change the width to 1600, then the height will be 1600 as well. Now let's modify the dual settings for each case sampler. Enable noise for first case sampler. For the second case sampler, we don't need noise. Use any number as the C. The C here can be zero. Select both of these to be fixed. Then I'll use 10 steps here for both samplers. By using 10 steps, I realize the model performs best to the control net conditioning. Next, the CFG for both samplers will be one. I will set the sampler to dpmpp underscore sde then choose beta as the scheduler moving on in the second case sampler use the same sampler and scheduler in here as well then for the steps use 5 out of 10 for the first sampler then the second sampler starts from 5 to refine the 10 steps now enable the noise here since we are adding noise then the second case sampler noise should be disabled. Now let's observe what Z image will provide for our input prompt. I'll go up here and hit run. All right, so we get this from Z image. I like the model's creativity. The visual idea is generated from the prompt and the outcome is impressive. However, we can notice we do not have control over the character's posing style or composition of the image. So let's see how to fix this with a control net group and our reference image earlier. As we can see, we have three separate workflows. So let's combine them. I'll move to the group here closer, double click on the canvas, type Gwen image. Select the node here, Gwen image div, same control net. This node will add our control net to the main model as a patch. So drag out the model patch, select model patch loader. In here, load the control net union model for Z image table. Below is the VAE. After is the image slot. I'll zoom out from here. Then drag the depth from our reference image into the image slot. Next, I'll decrease the strength 
of the control net to 0 0.80 however you can make this more 0 0.9 if you want exactly the same pose so let's rearrange these nodes to make them easier to see now drag the model from model sampling which goes into the model input after that drag the model out from here into the first k sampler model input so this is all we need to combine the three workflows let's see what happens when we use the control net model and z image to modify the prompt so that it matches our reference image we go up and we hit run all right so we now have something decent of how i want the composition and character in the scene compared to our previous results we can see the guided pose by the depth preprocessor exactly to the reference image and this is a powerful model if you get the settings right even with multiple faces in a scene if your generations have mistakes use long descriptive and detailed prompts describing the pose and descriptions Changing the C gives almost similar results, so you need to modify the prompt more if you need more different results. So I have prepared a final workflow here, including a few multiple preprocessors depending on the result you want to achieve. You can simply link any preprocessor you want to use into the image control node. After, you can view the preview to influence the outcome. Another addition to the final workflow is an upscale group here. Following my previous video using the latent upscale, this uses a complete method to further improve the image quality after the initial generation. In here, you only have to select your favorite upscale model since this is automated. I have added a group node here as well to mute any group in the workflow. If you are a resource creator, this plug and play workflow will be available in the library and on top of that i want to thank everyone who joined recently for being supportive as always leave a like to let me know if you found value from this video and if you are looking for a shortcut to fast high quality image generations you can check out this video right here and i'll see you all in the next video